Sam Colt introduced the modern single action revolver in 1873. They ran about $17 a piece. And these guns are known mainly for winning the West. I mean, a 45 Colt, it's just on the hip of a cowboy. I mean, it's just iconic. And today, they're still very popular firearms. It just really slows things down a bit. Pulling that hammer back with each shot, taking aim, loading it slow, firing it slow. I mean, these are just great guns to take to the range. And it expands your experience in firearms. We have a Ruger Blackhawk, but also a Taylor Smoke Wagon, which is based more toward the Colt design. Now we're sponsored by Otis, and we're using one of the multi-caliber pistol kits. They're also known for their boar snakes and providing the U.S. military with cleaning kits. And we really appreciate Otis for sending these kits. All right, guys, we're going to go through three steps. We're going to disassemble it, uh, we're going to clean it, and then we'll reassemble. Uh, this is a Ruger Blackhawk. It's in 45 Colt. We also have a Taylor Smoke Wagon in 45 Colt as well. Uh, we're not going to clean this one, but I'm going to show you one thing that's different uh, when you're cleaning a single action revolver uh, than your standard Rugers. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and open up our loading gate and we can just spin this around and you can see that the gun is unloaded. Now with the Taylor Smoke Wagon, it's more like the Colt. And so we have to open up our loading gate and then we put it in half cock and then we can spin it. So just a little bit different. So first thing we want to do is remove our cylinder. And so right here is your base pin latch and your base pin. So we're just going to depress it, pull this just straight out. And then go ahead and open up your loading gate pull your cylinder out, and now we have it out. Next, we're gonna remove the grips. And of course, you just have a small little screw here. And you wanna remove these grips because we're gonna put this in the vise uh, just for the barrel cleaning, but also you need to check your springs underneath. Next, our ejector housing. We're gonna remove it. There's a screw right here at the front. Now this is under spring tension, um, and so it, it'll pop up, but it won't fly out typically. And just pull that loose, there's your spring, and here is your ejector rod. And now we can pull out our base pan. So one thing I like about Ruger, it retains the base pan, makes it really easy when you're taking these apart. Now when taking apart a Colt style, uh, go ahead and take out your base pan, and it comes all the way out. Drop your cylinder. Another difference with the Colt type actions uh, is that this cylinder has a pin inside or a sleeve, and so you wanna clean that for sure. And then you clean out this area. But with this, you can see there are no grip screws. And so we have to take the grip off. And it's not very difficult to do, but it's just something that you need to know. So right here you have two screws. Go ahead and take those out. And then right here at the bottom, you have a screw. You need to just take it off. And then this piece just comes all the way off. You can see there's not really a back strap. It's just part of the grip. Now when cleaning out your barrel, it's great to put it in a vise. And we have a couple of Otis uh, jaw protectors for your vise. And it has this slot right here so you can slide your barrel in there. And so as we put this in, and then we just tighten it down. It's just gonna give us a really secure fit onto the revolver. Now we're gonna be using one of the Otis multi-caliber pistol kits. And the first thing we wanna do is to pull out our brass rod. Take your adapter, go ahead and put it on, screw it in. And then we have a jag, and this is for 45 Colt, or 45 caliber. Then we're gonna take one of our cleaning cloths. Now we're using the Shooter's Choice FP10 CLP, uh, and this will get most of it clean. But just in case, I have some of the Hoppies number nine, and uh, this is some solvent, and we're gonna go through it first. We'll just take a little bit of that solvent, put on here. When you're pushing your bore brush through, uh, you can hit the back, and just to keep it from damaging it, we're gonna take a cloth, we're gonna run it through, and just tie it at the back. And this just gives you a little protection when that rod comes through. Then we take our solvent, put it through the bore.
just get all of that powder residue, any lead. And now we're going to put it through one more time and we're just going to let it set just like that. Next, take your bore brush, go ahead and attach it. And then we're going to run it through with the solvent in there. This is just going to clean out everything. I do this about 10 times. Now we're going to run just a clean bore patch right through. And we're looking to get this really clean and get that solvent out. If it gets too dirty, you can switch out your patches. Here we're going to run one last clean patch through just to make sure we've got everything out. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Next, let's take a clean patch. Go ahead and put it on your jag. And then we're going to take some of our CLP and just give it a light coat of oil. You don't want a whole lot. This just gives it a little protection. And it gets any last minute residue out of there. Just keep doing that, running patches until it turns out clean. Now obviously you don't have to use a vise, but it sure does make the job a lot easier. Uh, and I've just started doing that. Typically I'll just clean it right there at the table. Put the grip in the vise. Uh, this just gives you a little more stability. Again, this is not necessary. It just makes it easier. Just take your brush and just clean it nice. Just get in those crevices right there and those little angles. You want to get the face right here where the firing pin is. Right here at your barrel. I mean, you can see we've got a lot of debris in there. And this will just keep it nice and clean. Uh, you can use a little bore solvent if you have a lot of buildup. But if you clean these regularly, you don't really need to. One thing you can also do is to bring back your hammer and uh, where the uh, cylinder lock is. It'll expose that a little bit. But that's about it. Now next we want to clean out this cylinder. Uh, and one of the things about the cylinder is where the rounds fire toward the end, uh, they typically really foul up right here. And so we're going to go ahead and push it all the way through because there is some residue. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's definitely in there. And we'll take some solvent just like we did the bore and go through. Yeah, you can feel that end is really has some debris in there. And as you push the jag through, you can, man, yeah, that's got some buildup. Really helps if you keep the patch kind of open and not bunched up. But really, we just need to go through it once, maybe twice at the most. But the big thing is that bore brush is going to get the rest of it. And of course, first, we're going to let this set for just a minute and let that solvent work. Then take your bore brush, just go through it about five times. each cylinder, making sure you just get that cleaned out. And also the face of the cylinder, go ahead and just clean it up. Sometimes this gets really dirty, and so you want to make sure you just keep this clean. Uh, here you can see I'm just using the brush. Nylon brush is working well. Uh, sometimes it really cakes on, so you need to use a little bit of solvent to get that off. And then here at the back as well, this doesn't tend to get as dirty, but it's according to how much you're shooting. And just examine it and uh, you can tell if it's ready to go ahead and start putting the CLP in there. I'm going to take a couple of cotton swabs and go through that center part where the base pin is. Because, you know, when you're firing the rounds, I mean smoke and debris, as you can see, are all over. But really, just a little bit of cleaning. Kind of makes that, just gets it clear. Also take one of these Q-tips and just run it up into my ejector housing. You can see, I mean, it gets debris on there. The smoke, the gunpowder. And guys, just keep cleaning it until it comes out clean. 
We're going to wipe down our spring. And you can see it gets dirt on there. So just keep that nice and clean. Then we'll take our ejector rod and our base pan. If there's any kind of uh, debris on here that's sticking, if there's some carbon or anything, you know, obviously you'll want to clean that off. But this is pretty, uh, pretty clean compared to uh, the bore. Now next we're going to take the shooter's choice and we're going to just go ahead and put a little bit on our ejector rod pin. And when I say a little bit, I mean just a little bit. You just want a light coating. You don't want this to attract debris. Definitely a little bit on your uh, base pin. This just helps it go smoother. And also a little bit on your spring. You want to examine your main spring, make sure that it's good to go. I would just give a little bit of oil on that, not much. Uh, right here beside your hammer, just a touch. A little bit on your cylinder release, then maybe a little bit right here on the base pin detent pin. Now we're ready to put it back together. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and put on our grips. And of course, there's no real particular way to do this. Just tighten this down. One thing you don't want to do is tighten it too tight. You don't want to break those grips. Next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put in our cylinder. Open up your loading gate and it should just fall right in. Now you want to line this up because when you're putting in your base pin, it's going to go in. And one thing you want to make sure with the Ruger is there's a little bit of a cut here that fits to the barrel. So you want to make sure you line that up. Then to press your base pin, make sure it's good and secure. Close our loading gate. Take your ejector rod and your ejector spring. And you want to put it in this way. It doesn't go on the outside, it goes just like this. Next, we're going to slide our spring into the hole right here. Bring this over, line it up. You want to make sure the housing fits right to the frame. And that should line up your screw. Again, secure, but not too tight. Guys, we got it back together. Everything is clean, working well. Man, there's something about a single action revolver that's just awesome. And if it's going to sit in your safe for a little while, take one of the uh, gun wipes. It's the 085. Just give it a good coat. That way it'll keep it from any kind of corrosion. Just protect the metal. Man, that's the best that's looked since it came out of the box. <laughs> and guys, you have everything you need right here in this really small kit. Easy to take to the range. You've got your brushes, your bore mops, you have your jags. You have extra rods in case you need to have a longer barrel you need to clean, and of course your CLP, and it all just fits in this small case. And so this makes it really convenient, easy to carry. Again, you may need just a little bit of bore solvent, and a few Q-tips always helps. And guys, whether you have the Ruger style, the Colt style, or even one of the 22 Wranglers, uh, you know, they're pretty much the same kind of process. They're all designed the same way, and so it's really easy. Again, there are a few differences with Colt style, but it's simple. So guys, keep that single action revolver clean and maintained. It just gives you a lot more joy when you're shooting. And you throw on your cowboy hat and your cowboy boots and you're back in the old west. We also appreciate Otis for sponsoring the video. And guys, Otis Technologies is putting out some really incredible cleaning kits, but also Otis Defense supplies cleaning kits for our US military. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic.
Man, being 45, we're gonna, of course, this one fits the 45 ACP, okay. Uh, but I'm gonna use a little bit of solvent and this, now when you're pushing your board bar, just gives us a nice platform. But guys, honestly, okay, hold on. we're gonna put it back into the ejector housing, whoops. And then go into the housing. Nope, nope, nope. I don't look good. Sam Colt invented the, okay, he didn't invent, did he invent it? Now Otis Technologies, okay. now Otis, now Otis Cleaning, okay. they make great products. Again, suppliers, cleaning. Okay. I do, ma'am. <laughs>